Now, just to add a bit of realism to it, we want to put some joins in where the different boards are going to go. And in our isometric view, we had, uh, that one's got three joins. The one that I did in the previous video had, I think, uh, sorry, it's only got two joins. The other one had three. So if we divide that up into approximately four equal sections, about 17 millimetres across, 34 millimetres, about 51 millimetres, that's going to give us three equal sized boards. Now, the joins are going to be just light. They're not going to be a strong feature of the of what we see, they're just a light line that remains light. Um, so they're just a basic glue joint that would be in the timber. They're not going to show us a very prominent line. So there they are. And I probably don't really want those little dots in the way anymore, so I'll just get rid of those. I'll tidy them up a bit later. Okay, we'd probably go for a bit of a bit of a wood grain look. So we'll put some little lines like that in, maybe going various ways, maybe put a little knot here and there, maybe just some parallel lines, a few little curly bits, and we might go for a softer pencil such as an HB, and shade that in and make it look like a slightly darker piece of timber. So. Try to make the thing look sort of fairly authentic. On the ends of the legs, we'd have uh, a little bit of end grain, just like we did on the isometric version. So just some little, they can be look quite wiggly because growth rings or end grain on timber is never perfectly straight or follows a perfect curve. It's all a bit varied, so makes it easy to, to sort of demonstrate that as a, as a freehand sketch. Okay, and we might want to put a light shading on that just to show that it's actually a bit darker than just pure white. Something like that. So that's completed our top view. In the front view, which is going to go in this area here, we're going to take a lot of information out of that top view. So a lot of our measurements are already there. We just have to transfer them from the previous view. Okay, so for example, we would see a leg lined up. So I've lined up with those two legs there. I know that that leg is this height. So I'm simply going to draw that line straight down while I'm at it. I might as well outline the outside line. And of course, I've got to do the same thing over the other side. So I've got an outline straight down the outside. Oops, I went a little bit high there. And the inside edge of that line. So I'm perfectly lined up there. So by projecting straight down, no need for any measurements. I can I can anticipate that that's pretty accurate. Put the tops and bottoms in, and there's our other leg. Now the table top <clears throat> is 30 millimeters thick, so in the drawing that's three millimeters from there to there. So we're going to have that little gap, that little one millimeter gap, and then we're going to have a line that goes all the way across here, three millimeters down from the top. So the easiest way to do that is just measure down three about there, down three about there, and you can draw it right through because it will go all the way through. But it'll also have this little notch bit showing here that's about one millimetre in, so just a little vertical freehand line there and there, and then that outline can be run all the way through between the two legs. So that's the that's the actual table top. And the only other thing that we need to show in that view is the, the rail, that rail there. And if I remember correctly we made that if we made that 120 millimeters in, in real size. So 
measuring down from the top, that's going to be 12 millimetres. Down 12 to there, and down 12 to there. Connect the two up. Now if we wanted to, we could actually show the hidden detail of these rails through here. Technically we should do that. So that piece of timber that runs through there, that should be shown as a series of short dashes, just fairly lightly drawn. So that's called a hidden detail line. Some people call it a hidden outline, it means the same thing. So we'll put those through just to show the position of those rails. Even though we can't see it, it's hidden, but the fact that it's shown in that hidden detail line actually confirms that it, it goes all the way through. There's no confusion there. So the, the benefit of a, of a correctly drawn technical drawing is that somebody who's got the required skill, doesn't matter if they don't even speak the same language, you could send this, this drawing off to somebody in Russia or China or Lithuania or Zimbabwe or somewhere and they would be able to make the table from the information provided. So in a sense, a technical drawing is a, it's a, almost a form of language all of its own. There's no confusion there. Everyone understands what we're trying to achieve. A little bit tedious sometimes. Just putting all these things in, it can take a little bit of time. And I'm actually, I admit I'm actually rushing this a little bit. Keep the video short. Normally I would take a little bit more time and care to put these dashes in, just to get them a little bit more perfect. Okay, so there they are. Now... If we wanted to show those dash the, the rail in the end view, it's going to travel, it's going to go across the middle of the leg there, so I'll put about one little dash just there, one little dash just there, and then it's not, um, it's not going to go right to the top. It's only going to go, that's the top of the rail just there. So there's another dash there, another dash there, and then we line up with this row down here and put some dashes down like that and then across to the other side do the same thing. So that shows the position of the end rail as, as it would be seen in that view. Even though it's hidden, it shows, it shows precisely where it is. That's a little bit optional, probably not absolutely essential that you put that detail in, but it, it certainly cuts down on the confusion. And while we're at it, we'll put some wood grain on there. Maybe go over it with the HB again, just to darken it up a little, put a little bit of shading on that edge of that top piece. Okay, and that's our, our front view completed. Now the end elevation, I'm actually going to draw that in after I finish this tutorial. It's going to look exactly the same as that, except it's narrower. Okay, so it's going to be like a squashed version of that. So I won't take up your time right now by drawing that while you're watching, okay? It's the same process, it's just that the width of it is different. So uh, in our second tutorial, when I uh, place the dimensions on the drawing, you'll actually see that completed. Thanks for watching. Um, catch up with you soon. Thank you.